welcome to everybody and welcome to you Marnix as well. <laughs> Thanks. Hello, hello guest people. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um yeah so i'll just um i'll keep an eye on because um usually a couple of people continue to join um but yeah how are you <laughs> i'm really well i was very tired this afternoon and then i realized what 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 do i like to do when i get tired and then it was oh i like to coach <laughs> so i had a conversation yeah and i was back at it again oh amazing that's so interesting because i guess the natural inclination is almost to just what do i do it i'm tired oh, i'll just rest <laughs> yeah it's like well sometimes i do that but i <laughs> you know talking about whatever i talk about is so it it it, it just starts this life within me and 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 so i know that i have so much experience with that so i thought well i can give in in, into the tiredness and or feel grumpy or feel shitty that I feel it right now or I can just have a, a few conversations and I did and it was really really amazing <laughs> so I'm I'm back That's how nice. about you how are you I'm good yeah I feel like that that and um, just what you said there is almost <laughs> a point to kind of expand on because yeah we'll, be, we'll, we'll revisit that after I've done the intros because <laughs> uh, I'll sure. have probably forgotten it though then <laughs> so you'll yeah. have to remind me <laughs> But it feels uh, it feels quite a powerful insight because I think the natural in inclination is to kind of be like, oh, well, I need to rest because I'm tired. But actually, it's doing what lights us up. And I guess that's kind of what we're here to talk about, really, isn't it? The power of having fun. <laughs> so, um, I guess it is. Yeah, that's a great way to, to kick it off. But, <laughs> but I'll tell you what I'll do is I'll tell you as I'm um, allowing people in, um, I will tell you and whoever's new, if there's anyone new, um, a little bit about the summit and um and then yeah we'll, we'll go from there so and i'll do a little bit of an intro of you as well um using the selective bio that you sent me rather than uh, <laughs> the, the alternative version <laughs> which you may feel like you want to share as well but um, <laughs> yeah uh, sure yeah so basically this summit is all about self-rediscovery and for me that's kind of how my journey has felt with with them um, the principles and i guess you know all the other different things that we explore along the way um but for me i think a lot of people come to the journey expecting that we're going to fix and change something externally um whereas what i came to see is that it's more about rediscovering who we always were beyond kind of all of the external stuff um and then we, when we get to that place and that realization, we then can kind of play with life and dance with life um, as we choose in our humanness. So it's kind of, yeah, about rediscovering who we really are and then rediscovering how we want to dance in life. So that's kind of the aim of the summit, really, to unravel a life that we love. So we've been hearing from loads of great speakers um, all about kind of their own journeys and, and with things that they've kind of felt stuck with and found freedom with and, um, and unraveled for themselves. So, yeah, we've just been exploring lots of different topics and, and um, yeah, live most Fridays. Uh, if, if people have questions, I'm always on hand either in the Self Rediscovery Facebook group or um, via email to um, help people with mentoring, helping people see something different. But it's really fun every Friday, basically, to just explore with different people. <laughs> so, um, so I'm really excited that you're here. Um, and it's really funny because um, when I kind of reached out to you, it was just because I'd loved some of your posts. And, um, and so we, we had that, that chat booked and there was, um, I had my self rediscovery foundations program going on at the time. And somebody said to me in that, in one of the sessions, they were like, have you heard of this Marnix pals guy? And I was like, that's so funny. Cause I literally just arranged to speak to you at the time. So I was like, well, yeah. there we go. He's meant to come on. So, uh, <laughs> so I know we had a fun chat and, um, thought it'd be fun to, to do this now. I'm just going to let some more people in just one second. Um, sure. And this obviously there's um this isn't a great opportunity for people to um ask questions as well. So at some point we'll come to questions, but there's also people watching uh, on the replay at home as well after this. So um mm. so yeah, it's really it's really fun to create. But I'm just gonna kind of talk a little bit about you and introduce you formally and then we'll go into a more human conversation. Because <laughs> bios are always hilarious. <laughs> yeah, you, yeah. You posted yeah. to the other day. Um so, Let's yeah. first do the written down version of me and then we go to the flesh and bone and, and yeah. blood version. 
I love that. <laughs> and Karen was saying, we had Karen DeMarco on last week and she oh, was saying much a similar thing. She was a lot of fun. So, um, yeah, um, what, I love what we're here to talk about because we're talking about how kind of creativity is, is kind of almost super boosted, I guess. We create miracles by having fun and playing around. Um, and that's definitely my experience of life. You know, I used to be very serious about um, creating and, and when I'm tense and tight and taking life very seriously, I contract and the world contracts. So I think in and end up kind of creating more of what I don't want than anything else. You you were you were once a serious girl? I was. Really? <laughs> wow. Yeah, I know. Come a long way. Time, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but when I'm open and having fun and living from joy, I very much see that, you know, focusing on play, the world expands. So, um, so this is going to be a fun conversation. Um, and you, I know you've got a great story about how you've been um, creating. So um, can't wait for everybody else to, to hear it as well. So, uh, so yeah, to formally introduce you, um, you're a Dutch transformative coach and author of eight books about mental health, um, living in Amsterdam with two cats. Um, I love cats. <laughs> You've worked in advertising as a copywriter and creative director for 30 years and have an extensive knowledge of addiction and compulsive behavior, depression and anxiety, not in the least through deep personal experience. You've always been fascinated by what drives people and more in particular, what drives them crazy. Uh, you've read over 5,000 books on self-development improvement, life hacks and spirituality, which I just don't even know how you managed to read, <laughs> read 5,000 books. It's amazing. Um, and viewed thousands of videos on the topic and keep exploring the depths of the human mind and how to navigate our psychological storms with grace and respect. As a transformative coach, you've helped many people find a more playful and exciting and creative life, living from a clear mind and a deep trust in, your, in their personal resilience. You're an aspiring and curious world traveller who loves to meet new people, write, learn from the best coaches and teachers in the world, keep fit and work out. So that's your... Yeah, it's also serious, isn't it? <laughs> that is a serious uh, When I hear my own bio like that, I think, ah, oh, next, next, next time I have the chance, I'll write a... It's like, you never hear somebody says, well, I'm just kind of... You know, fooling around. I have no clue what I'm doing. You know, I, I'm, 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 I'm just. I don't have an idea where I'm going. I'm not really good at stuff. But you know, I'm, I'm just lucky. And sometimes things work out the way I, I planned. And most of the time they don't. It's also <laughs> no. It's very, you know, it's all very serious and and formal and special and amazing. Yeah. Well, maybe it's up to me to to change all that a little bit. Yeah. Yeah, I love that. So I guess the first thing, yeah, is, is just kind of offering you the the question of kind of sharing your own personal journey and, and what you've seen. Because I know we, ha we had a good chat, so um, I wondered if you'd share some of that um, that we talked about before. And, and I guess um, I kind of loved the way, way you shared your journey with me, um, just talking about you know, there were so many kind of, yours is one of deep exploration and kind of beautiful realizations, I think. And it's, I just wondered if you wanted to share that kind of what that understanding of life that you came to and I know you didn't actually come to it through the principles it kind of just gave a language to what you'd already experienced as well so yeah I'll just leave it to you to share that <laughs> mm, okay. sure okay so oh, where to begin mm. uh, yeah I guess I guess when I was about 12 and I left um, primary school and went to high school I, um, I I developed a fear of life uh, and in order to uh, cope with that, I, I, I started to reinvent myself and make myself into a, 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 an enigma, a, a, an untouchable, un, un, unscarable, uh, uh, covered up person, very serious. I was very, I hardly s said any, any, anything. I was very, I, I looked very contemplative, I looked very um, indecisive or just very, uh, I was always very distant from most people. And th now this was a very perfect way to uh, to close myself off of of, of pain and 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 and, and uh, painful surprises. And I, I became a master uh, at this. Uh, you know, at the end of the of my my when I was seventeen or eighteen, and I finished my my high school. I was one of the most interesting guys in, in, in school, but I was also the probably the loneliest guy because nobody you know, had the guts to approach me because I looked so um, uh, unapproachable and so um, tight and closed off. Now I, 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 uh, I started drinking when I was 17 and I 
um, became very good at that. I used drinking in everything in my life. You know, when, when life was amazing, I drank to celebrate it. And when life was the opposite of that, I drank to forget or to, to numb myself out. And, and in between, well, the booze was there. So what do you do when it's, you know, in the kitchen or on, on yeah. the table? So, um, in, uh, <laughs> I, I, yeah, so I, and I started to, uh, I started out as a law student which sound way more impressive than it is because I was, I was just enrolled in university. I'd never did anything. I'd never did even one exam. And after two and a half years of wasting the money of the government, or the Dutch government, I decided to stop fooling around. And I went for a serious job and I enrolled myself in a, 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 an advertising course. I worked summer long, very, very hard to make a portfolio of advertising stuff. And then from there, I pursued a, a career in advertising, which was really, really cool. I worked at a very big agency, stopped for a few years, start, made music. I became a singer-songwriter, performed, hated that, hated that with a vengeance. Performance, I, was, I thought it was so awful. So I, and I forgot my own songs, and I felt so self-conscious when I was on stage. So that was not a big success. Then after two years of trying that, sorry? It sounds amazing though. What, what an experience. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know, but it wasn't. At least, <laughs> at least not for me. You know, I was, I, was a, I was a very scared performer and I drank a lot in those. So I, was all, I always uh, had a, a hangover. I was, uh, I was very anxious, uh, very unstable in the way I, 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 I uh, went about in life. So, um, by that time, I had developed a serious uh, alcohol uh, problem. I used a lot of drugs as well. And um, um, after the two years, two and a half years of, of trying to make it into the music business, I'm, I, in 2000, I started my own online agency. And 2000 wasn't the best time to do it because the, the internet bubble had, had just burst. Mm. And, and I was with my best friend from, from, uh, from my hometown. We started this agency from our, uh, actually from our basement with one computer and a very uh, crappy uh, uh, internet uh, connection. But uh, in, uh, over the years, we, we became pretty successful and it turned out uh, he, uh, I was a very, very powerful combination with him. He was the, the entrepreneur and I was just a creative uh, unreliable uh, guy, but who came up with many cool ideas. And at the our most successful moment, we had about 45 uh, employees. So it was a pretty big agency. Mm. And, I, and, I, and I kept on drinking. Uh, tried to quit a few times. Um, had a pretty miserable life in general. Um, was not very adventurous. Was very, um, very anxious. I developed... Uh, a huge amount of, of depressions and, and, and anxiety disorder, mm -hmm. panic attacks, and they became so bad that uh, one f for, for a month I didn't uh, even uh, want to leave my bedroom. I couldn't. I couldn't go to the, to the bathroom. It was too stressful for me. Mm -hmm. Now, in, um, and, and, and somewhere uh, in between all the drinking and the, and the, and the using drugs and the, and, the, and the attempts to quit drinking and to, and to pick up a normal life and to, to return to, to something um, more um, fertile and, and serious and healthy, um, I picked up uh, uh, spiritual books. So I, I, I read a couple of books and then I dropped them again and I drank a lot and then I picked up the books again and I always felt that this was my direction. So I quit in 2012. I quit drinking and, and using drugs and then started the really, really big search for uh, waking up yeah. because I learned that that was a possibility. So I wanted to wake up and I wanted to find the, the, the solution for happiness and then you know, as soon as I, I had found it, I, I was, I, I would share it with the world. That was the, that was the plan. Mm -hmm. Now the first year after stopping, uh, my, uh, addiction was, was very, very bad. I was, had never been as depressed as, as in, the, in that year. It was really very tough, but I, well, obviously I survived. And, um, after that, it, 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 it I, I, you know, I, I started to see things in a different light. I started to 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 enjoy life again like that was a very long time ago for me 
And I started reading about uh, all the mainstream spiritual stuff. Uh, I, I did some NLP and I did Buddhism and, I, and then I discovered non-duality and I wanted to become enlightened. And well, I had some really cool uh, experiences around that. Um, and I kind of discovered, uh, you know, what you said in your introduction, the, the thing we, our, our true nature, the, what's called the self with the capital S, the, the, the essence of who we truly are, the, the, the one thing that is playing uh, uh, in the world and pretending to be a lot of things in order yeah. to, in order to experience life. And I had a few, a few very profound uh, uh, experiences and in, in connecting to that in different ways. So I wrote a book about that. And then a couple of years later, someone on Twitter uh, said to me, you know, Marnix, um, the stuff you write about and talk about and make your videos about, it's, it, it sounds a lot like the three principles. So have you ever heard of, of those? And, and I respected this woman. So I, I checked out the website. <laughs> and I saw a video uh, of Michael Neal and a video of George Bransky. Uh, and uh, I think I told you. And I thought, wow, what an idiot. So <laughs> the first thing I saw, that was what I thought. Like, ah, oh, the three principles, sure, sure. And I, <laughs> my bookshelf was, was filled with books with the seven, this and the eight steps and the ten. Th so I thought it was just something like that. And the, and the cool thing is that I totally dismissed the principles. And I think half a year later, I came back to the same website, saw the same two videos, and I thought they were amazing, <laughs> so profound and life-changing and awesome. And from, um, from that moment on, I, I, I became very interested in, in, in the principles. I, uh, I read a book by Amy Johnson and then emailed Amy Johnson and said, Hey, Amy Johnson, I loved your book. Have you ever heard about the three principles? <laughs> <laughs> and she said, did you read the, uh, you know, the, the last pages in the book? And I didn't. And there it was. You know. And she was uh, coming from a three principles background without really mentioning them constantly. And she said, uh, uh, there is a conference in, in, in March to, or April, uh, March, 2017 in London. Are you, are you going? And I thought, well, I said, well, go and then we can meet up and maybe it's fun and you can, you can get to know all the other people in the community. And I was like, okay, but I didn't really want to do it. And so one day I went to my work and I was in Amsterdam on my, on my scooter, on my Vespa. And I had to stop before a bridge to wait for a guy who crossed the bridge on a bicycle. And this guy looked like Sydney Banks. Like it was amazing. <laughs> and then I thought, okay, <laughs> I'm going. <laughs> I went and I loved the, I love the Three Principles uh, convention, the, the conference. I was there for three days. I saw Dick and Bettinger. <gasps> and I was so in love with Dick and Bettinger. Oh. And I approached him when he was in the, in the main hall. And he, 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 had, he had told me, uh, because I email everybody when I like them. And he told me, <laughs> email, he said, uh, yeah, I do that all the time. And he said, oh, if you're in London, uh, look me up and we have a conversation. So I tapped him on the shoulder and I said, Dickon! <laughs> and he was... He was so scared of me <laughs> when I did that. <laughs> so um, I have, but I have a photo of, of the two of us. And I looked like a happy child. That he just had a fire truck on his fourth birthday. It was like <laughs> amazing. And, from, and I loved being there. I, I, I didn't know that you could be with so many people and be so in love with everybody and everything. And, uh, you know, everybody was smiling. It was like amazing. I've never, it's like a cult. It was really cool. <laughs> Not the, the, the idea that it was the cult, but the, the, the effect it had on everybody was really, really cool. And I loved all the speakers. So, yeah, I kind of I got stuck in there. And I did uh, Super Coach Academy. Um, and I trained with, I'm still training with Aaron Turner. And, and my mentor right now is Barb, Barb Patterson. Um, so I love learning from people. And I'm also uh, enrolled in, uh, in coaching with George Prensky a little bit, which I love, Lo love, love, love. Um, yeah, and, and, and about the stuff that happened, maybe, maybe I should uh, just shut up for a while now in order to give you uh, 
<laughs> the space to, to, talk, to say something to me because I know I can uh, get very there's so enthusiastic. Much, there's so much I could dive into here. I think um, yeah. one of the things I love about your journey is just like how easily you create. You're like, yeah, I just wrote a book and I just created this band. And, and <laughs> it's like, I'm wondering, had creation always felt easy to you? Yeah. Yeah. Except for when I started to think about creation. Yeah. 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 No, it was very effortless. You know, I was in, in advertising. I was a copywriter, creative director. So I was paid to come up with stuff, with creative stuff. Yeah. And um, so I, I I learned to trust the fact that there, there there will be always would be ideas. And most of the time I just waited, you know, when I had two weeks to come up with something, I would just waited for the, the last evening before the presentation. Yeah to come up with stuff. And I was always very confident, you know, I just went to bed at 11 in the evening and then an hour later I had 16 ideas. Not, not just because they were coming through me in that moment, but because they had been on the, on the back burner for a while. So I've, yeah. I've come to rely on, on that as a very, very profound and very helpful system. You know, you just throw in the, the stuff you don't have an immediate answer to. Yeah. And, 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 and the universe provides, all these amazing solutions actually yeah. just a little patient that's so cool and i i feel, find that with creation as well but i think for many people uh, especially if we're kind of looking to be more creative it can feel quite difficult so what i love about your journey is just how easy creation appears um and i i was wondering that i was like oh i wonder if he's ever suffered with that with kind of not being able to be creative <laughs> but we're always creating our own experience of life as well right so we're creating a myth. podcast right now so yeah. yeah it's yeah it's just you know it's just also a matter of definition what do you if you think creation is 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 uh is creating uh, uh la gioconda or uh is creating uh, uh whatever a, a beautiful cathedral somewhere or it's creating a, a, a musical masterpiece mm. i know creation is 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 essential for who we are we are creating or we are part of the creation of life you know every yeah. second we are in is new it's we we never appreciate that or hardly or maybe yeah. everybody who is listening here appreciates it all the time sorry for that uh, for my assumptions but i i do appreciate it a lot because i i try to talk about it i try to talk about it in order to 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 get a feel for how special it is that we always live our life in a new moment. Yeah. And we are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I've been, I've, yeah, I've been here before. No, you haven't. <laughs> Even if you do something for the thousandth time, it's, it's, it's still new. It's still fresh. So creation is such a common thing, but as long as you just um, see it as, as, as a means to create a masterpiece, well, you, you're just minimizing the whole idea, I guess. And, and creation is just, just letting, letting uh, the universe use you as a, as a huge brush to create whatever, you know. That's amazing, and, uh, yeah. Yeah, uh, it is. But we have so much thinking about it. we have to be great at what we do. And, people want, want, and there are so many people who are, are better at, at, at this. And, you know, when you look at, at children, you know, just before they, they grow up and we tell them what to do, they can do anything they want. They really have a group of, of 40, peop 40 children of three, four year years old, and you ask them, who's the best soccer player of you? And they all say, yeah, it's me. <laughs> and then you say, who can dance the best? And they say, yeah. So they have this, this unspoiled, untainted enthusiasm around whatever they can uh, accomplish. And they don't even look at it that way. Because that's all words by grown-ups. Like, oh, my child has self-confidence. No, they don't think like that. Oh, mm -hmm. you know, three-year-olds never follow a mindfulness course. You know, they don't need all that stuff. But so I think we creation's we're born. Really, creation's really just happening, isn't it? Like of course. Like it's all the time. It's, it's happening all the time. And then we get in there and judge it and label it. And, and that's kind of what stops the, the flow or, or gets us, I guess, creating in a direction that doesn't feel so good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah and I, we expect so much from ourselves mm. because we always think that we have to be good at, at something immediately which doesn't make sense at all you know we, we, we learn by trying and, 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 and nobody who's really good at something just woke up one day and was a master 
You know, they, they, they evolved it. They, they played with it. They tried it and they failed at it and they tried again. And, and then, you know, it, it becomes really interesting when, when you, be, when it becomes effortless, when you are so good at what you do that you never stop to think for a moment about what you're actually doing. You see it but with all the great artists, uh, painters, for example, they, they have years when they, they focus on, on technique and mm -hmm. what that, whatever they make is, is very lifelike and very real and very amazing because it looks so real. And then they get bored with that. Like, yeah, yeah, well, now I can reproduce it, but what, is it, what does it mean? I want to I wanna capture the soul of this stuff. Mm -hmm. But you have to be really good in order to make something that looks really simple yeah um but it doesn't mean that you shouldn't create because why would it only be fun if it if it's if it's good enough for, to hang in a museum i love that yeah. so yeah it doesn't have to be perfect to be fun it can be messy that's kind of part of the beauty of it right it's yeah. a lot of art is very messy and it's yeah. very interesting yeah <laughs> yeah that's cool <laughs> um and I also loved your story. I don't know if you want to share about um, how you ended up doing super coach. Cause I think yeah. that's a great example of how like we can think things are impossible and just out of nowhere, really a solution can kind of arise. And even that's again, creative. Um, so I love that story. I don't know if you want to kind of share yeah, that. Yeah, sure. It's, it's very interesting um, because it's got nothing to do with me. Uh, so and yeah, it has to do with miracles because we we talk about miracles. Right? I guess, yeah, <laughs> I guess, yeah, yeah. And it it it, it, it was. I think it started in two thousand in in January two thousand eighteen. I got the, the the newsletter, the Michael New newsletter, and uh, on Monday, and he was coming to uh, London, and um, he he, ha he he does these uh, uh, intensives with six or seven people three days somewhere and this was in a basement in, in, a, in, a, in a london hotel and i saw it and i had read i think three books by michael neal and i and i watched all his videos and i was very impressed by him and i thought i want to go there but I, I i i didn't have the money at all like not even a small amount of it but i had this idea of well that doesn't matter i i, I want to go anyway so i don't care about the money let's Let's not, you know, let's not uh, get stuck there because I, I don't have the money yet. I didn't care about it. So I was like, yeah, I'd like to do that. It was very, it was a very um, authentic, very, just very neutral idea. Like, yeah, I, 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 lo I love the idea of going there. And I went to work out and, and, and 10 minutes later, I thought, what if I just ask somebody to pay it for me? You know, I and, I and I immediately had a one client came up uh, in my mind and I, I got off my cross trainer and I went to the computer and I sent her an email and said, hey, I know you like me and I know you like what I do. What if you pay this for me so I can become better and that's helpful for you, but also for the world and uh, everybody in it. And I just send it. Not like oh well, what happens if she? Uh, and and I think eight min minutes later, she she returned the mail and said, yeah, sure, <laughs> that's good. It's an amazing idea. It's fine. So she she paid for that uh, without any. Uh, she didn't need anything in return. It was not like you know, let's have thirty five coaching sessions in order to, yeah. you know, so and that we. It's a lot of money that course, right? Yeah, yeah, but it gets better the story. Yeah. You know, it was it was it was i think it was five grand in in uh in, in dollars um which which is absolutely worth it. it was amazing so i i went to london and um i was there and then michael the third day he started to to talk about super coach academy now i was still i was still not sure if i wanted to become a serious coach or if i just wanted to let it happen and let it unfold in a, in a very slow way. And I didn't know if I wanted to invest money, but I think this super coach Academy was like $14,000. And I, I, I don't think I, I didn't even have $1,000, but I had the same feeling. I like, yeah, 
Yeah, I, I I'd love to do that. that. Feeling as like neut a neutral feeling, like uh, yeah, it's like it's like it's, you're, you're just entertaining it lightly. It's like you think about it and you think, yeah, I would love to do that, but there's no tightness. There's no. It's not even that I was jumping around and dancing with with uh, because I wanted it so badly. It sounded really cool. It was like that. Was, yeah, like a like the queen who was very excited. Something like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so. Um, I went back to Holland and, and a, a few months uh, passed by and didn't think about it. And then the, another email uh, rolled in and it was the, the email to remind us of, of the Supercoach Academy. I, had for, I, I forgot about it. And then, um, but the, the, for people who had done the intensive, it was cheaper. So they took off a slice of a couple of thousand dollars. It was still uh, uh, too much. And then they, even uh, 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 cut off uh, some more. And then I was approached by a, uh, a Dutch woman who lived in Switzerland. And she said she had done her due diligence and she had investigated all these coaches. And she said, I think you're the one for me. I think you're the only one who is not afraid to kick my ass. And I want somebody who kicks my ass. <laughs> and, you know, many people think that when they, when they first see me or hear me, or I don't know what it is, but I don't know. Because I kick ass if I feel like it, but it's not like <laughs> I'm the kick ass coach. I don't care about. Uh, I don't. I, I'm also a very sweet, sweet and gentle guy. I don't. Yeah. I don't like to 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 just use one way to go about this. But we met, and it was really cool. It was a really very sweet. Uh, she was very sad and very depressed. It was a very very cool conversation. And she said, "Yeah, it feels good. I want you to do this." And I and and I said, "Okay, that's fine." And, and, and I asked the, 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 the money I wanted from her for the coaching package was the money I needed for Super Coach Academy. I had never asked an amount like that. But I was like, I don't care. I don't care if she says no. And she said no. She said no, it's too much. And I said, well, then, then we don't have a deal because this is what I want. And I had never been so secure about myself. So like, yeah. And, and she said, okay, well, in that case, that's fine. Then I'll pay it. So, um, <laughs> I contacted Lynn from from Michael's uh, company and uh, said I'm 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 game I'm in and so I got the welcome package and the, the first coaching session with Michael was arranged and then I think a day later the woman said I'm not going to do it <laughs> so I was okay um I didn't really like that news so yeah, I was very worried about it for a day and I had to work that day I had to do some advertising stuff and I wasn't really very creative to be honest at the end of the day I, I said I can I please talk to you about this because it kind of screws up my my plans and I and she said yeah it's fine so we we talked and I had prepared this amazing monologue you know in order to <laughs> convince her like I am very emotional yeah. and I read it and she was like yeah yeah whatever didn't do anything for her <laughs> like, so I have nothing left and then we talked about it and she said, you know, Monica, the only reason I don't want to do this is because I don't have the time. I, I'd love to work with you, but, I, but if I do it, I want to be able to give everything I have. And I just don't have the time right now. So we have to do it some other time. And I said, but the money, he said, oh, the money, oh, that's not a problem. I'll give you the money. <laughs> so she gave it, I could pay it. And I, 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 I never coached her after that. <laughs> now this this happened three times after that again so i always tend to come up uh, or or meet amazing amazing people who believe in me and 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 who want to help me out and sometimes they are pretty wealthy and sometimes they just have a some money stashed somewhere and they just feel like i'm worth it so <laughs> i think it happened now six times it happened for um when I went to Penske in La Conner in February this year, um, it happened uh, very recently with a with a nice coaching package with George Penske. Mm. And but now I'm after a couple of times, I'm just starting to rely on it. In, not not in a way that I wake up in the morning and then I start to think all the things I want, but when I come across something that feels good, I kind of know that that it will be arranged somewhere along the line. Yeah, I don't know how it works, but nothing to kind of figure out. Like you couldn't have planned for any of that. To... No, I think that's a bummer for people listening right now. Like, 
well, there's no trick to do this. <laughs> How do you, no, no, there's not. It's just in the allowing. I think Dominic, I, I just saw, maybe he's listening, or I, I think he would agree. It is, it is, the thing is, I, I've been interested in, in, uh, in at least a little bit in the secret and in, uh, you know, manifestation and in the law of attraction and stuff like that. But it always kind of turned me off. You know, the materialistic uh, approach, the, the, the whole idea of, you know, if you want it, if you want it badly enough, you'll get it. And if you don't get it, well, it's your fault. It's like very unfair to me. And, and then the thing is, most of the, of the things I, I, I had in, that happened to me in life, I would never have chosen them. But they were very uh, important for my development, for my growth. I don't know shit about what I need. I don't know. <laughs> I, I, I most definitely don't need a Ferrari. I don't really care. And and you know Amsterdam is not a, especially not a not a very ideal city for Ferraris, but because all the all the bumps in the road. Mm. But it's more like, and maybe this is helpful. What I've seen is that I stay very very close to what makes me tick, what makes my heart sing, mm. what, what I love to do. I stay very very close to my my inner joy, and from that all these things happen. Yeah. Because everything I do is is in a way uh, uh, injected with with the feeling of the of the joy. Now I discovered this this uh, last year when I didn't have any clients for a month and I started to panic. What mm. I always did, um, but this was the fifth time in a row that it happened, and I kind of started to see a pat pattern in there. So I didn't really panic this time, and I just went back to the drawing board. I said, "What do I want to do in life?" What, what 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 do I want to get out of bed for? What what makes me happy? What makes me truly happy? What makes me inspired? And I got back to that, the basics of that. And I just found out that I love to help people. Yeah. I love to help people. I love to see people change and then have the idea that at least I'm just a little part in that. I love being used by the creative force of the universe. That's now, good. whether I make a make a, a Facebook post or have a coaching conversation, because yeah. coaching, to me, in my opinion, is the most most creative profession in the world. Yeah, and that's why I, I love one that. of the reasons I love it so much. Yeah, I really love that story because I think, um, and I know Dominic um, has talked about um, how we're kind of always already kind of creators um so with for me manifestation is just another label right for creating and and i think we're always manifesting um, and always always creating um but what i'm hearing what you're saying is that it's like that kind of joyful place of of showing up in your raw desire i guess of of what you love doing um without an attachment to the outcome and there's that so yeah. it's like that desire but also that allowing of of it to come in for you as well yeah i guess that's maybe the hardest part to not have a have an attachment to the outcome because we can turn every everything into a problem so you know then we start to get attached to not 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 getting attached we can make everything so 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 complicated and and this is maddening, I know. It was like when I was looking for some relief uh, in my depression, in my anxiety. I read all these, all these spiritual books and, and every single one of them said, it's already, you already have everything you need. And it was like, well, well what, do you, what do you mean? I feel like shit. What are you talking about? I have nothing. I just didn't see it. Or um, the thing you're looking for is the thing that's looking. <laughs> I was like, what does that mean? And all these, all these spiritual conundrums, and they and they sound really cool when you think about them, but especially the last one, you know, was by, by I think by a guy was it was called Meister uh, Eckhart. It's not Eckhart Tolle. It's it's a guy who was a, a couple of centuries before Eckhart Tolle, mm. and he said that he said the thing you're looking for is the thing that's looking. Now, if you just read that, it's like yeah, sure, whatever. <laughs> you know, bring me the enlightenment, bring me the good stuff. <laughs> but this is actually true. I, I, I had this realization maybe four or five years ago. I don't know. I was watching my, my I was sitting at my computer and I suddenly realized in a very profound way that I was the universe looking through the eyes of Marnix 
in a very casual way, I realized that like, huh. And I call it the most beautiful disappointment of my life because it was <laughs> very, very profound and very amazing. But it was also very ordinary and extremely mundane and, 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 and very unspectacular also. Mm. But it changed everything. You know, this, 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 is, this is the cool thing uh, 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 through principles communities where we have these people are always hunting for insights. You know, I've done the same. <laughs> It was very, very cool to come at a, at, a, at a seminar for a couple of days and then talk. people constantly talk about insights. Did you have an insight? Yeah. Was it a big one? <laughs> what was it about? He had an insight. Did he, did he have an insight? Did you hear what it was? What was it about? So um, I, have, I have insights every day. Like sometimes mm-hmm. I have 10. Yeah. It's like, and the cool thing with insights is that you can see something you already know, but you see it in a new way. Yeah. Now this doesn't make sense if you hear it and the brain says, yeah, whatever. But it does make sense when it happens to you. It's like you have you get an appreciation for another another depth inside the same truth. And I've come to um yeah, I've come to to uh, rely on the, the 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 normalcy of 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 all these insights happening every day, all day long. And it's not that I get blasé around it. It's like, I, I love it. I have so many insights and most of the times I have no clue what they mean. It's like I, I see this thing, oh, this is really cool. Not sure what it means, but it's very cool. And then somewhere along the line, it kind of uh, it drops or it molds into something that, that I can understand. Yeah. And there's so much to see and so much to find out and so much to discover. And I didn't know that. Because, well, I drank a lot. I thought that was the thing. I didn't know that. And so all these spiritual things were actually true. You, are, you already have it inside. Everything you need is already there. Yeah. It, is a, it is a fact. So when I tell it to somebody, and he's very frustrated about the fact that I tell them, I understand. <laughs> yeah. Because it is very frustrating. And it doesn't make sense. And it just sounds like a nice Instagram quote. <laughs> Yeah, I love that. And I love how you describe it as um I think you said the universe looking through Marnix's eyes. Is that what is that what you said? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. love that. That's that's yeah. so cool. <laughs> yeah, that's that should be an Instagram quote if it isn't already. <laughs> it probably is. Yeah. But it was like I saw that and it was like uh, yeah, I I yeah, I think I already knew this. Yeah. What, what what is it? but it I knew that it was a very profound uh realization and and and, and that it would it, 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 that would change a lot. Now, I also had a, another uh, experience in where I suddenly experienced the perfection of life. Now, that was way more impressive. <laughs> I think that was like the best drugs ever. I had three <laughs> seconds of this realization. And within three seconds, I understood the, com- the complete uh, galaxy, universe, whatever. It made total sense. Everything was perfect. Um, and then it went, it went by and, 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 and I smiled for six hours straight and it never came back. I don't know. I don't even know if you, if you need stuff like that, you mm. know, it, mm. you know, it just happens and it probably changed something. Um, it's, it probably shifted something, but shifts happen constantly. Yeah. Yeah. No, that's gorgeous. And it's almost like it's, for me it's like there's that glimpse of just knowing that there's so much beyond what we think I think that's that's the power of that almost because we just we get a glimpse of of almost the truth I guess or the truth for us (laughs) and we see what's possible beyond beyond our thinking um yeah I don't know if now is a good time to open up for questions in case there are any so if anybody has any questions um then just you can raise a hand or you can wave or and I'll just scan through and see if anybody is doing so. Who wants to come? Hey, Michelle, that was a really cool realization, just like Dominique is saying. Yeah. Yeah. She, she said, <laughs> she, she, she said, I've been waiting for someone to believe in me and someone has to be me. Well, there you go. Yes, <laughs> yeah. Michelle. I love that. <laughs> awesome. Uh, Paul has a question. I'm going to unmute you, Paul. 
Hey Nicole, hey Marnix. Okay. Hey Paul. Right, I put my hands up. It was me. I was a chat the way. Have you heard of this Marnix Powers chat? <laughs> um, he's, he's very profound. I like him a lot. <clears throat> so um, cool. I, I, I first listened to you. My God, when I listen to you, it's like listening to my own thoughts. It's, 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 Is that a good thing? Well, what, well you've, you've got a better accent than mine. Um, <laughs> you, you, your thoughts sound a lot better than mine do. But were you on it was on the podcast with Amy, Dr. Amy Johnson. So that's where I first heard about you. Then I started following you on Facebook. I'm now your stalker. Um, but what I like about you is the way you speak is so relatable. For me, it's so relatable. There's no fancy words. There's no um, tying it up with pretty bows and making it sound all very uh, educational. It's raw and it's very, it's very, very passionate. And although you're very chirpy and happy, exactly sound it today, some of the poems that you write on Facebook can be quite, am I right in saying they can, I don't want to say the word dark, but they can, very real, they're very real. Mm. Gloomy. They, yeah, yeah. And the, the poems are literally, I don't know if anyone else has, has, has read them, are literally, yeah. <laughs> I mean, forgive my, my swearing, it's I'm having a shitty day, I'm fucked up, but you know what, I'm all right with that. That was his uh, alternative bio, Paul. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and that is what I love. It, things aren't always pink and fluffy and glorious all the time. And yeah. sometimes I'm having a shit day. And you know what? I'm human and I'm all right with that. And that's that's what I absolutely draws me to listening and, and watching you and talking to you. And then secondly, tonight, yes. it's this whole... I'm a big advocate and love the law of attraction I was big into the secret found it too much like hard work like yourself but through talking to dominic and nicole and now yourself i find that forgive me if i don't get the wording right it's if you follow your desire your gut desire it it's 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 your authentic for me it's it's your authentic self it's like the universe talking to you saying this is your path this is your path there's zero effort involved mm -hmm. zero zero effort mm -hmm. involved and i've done the same as you i ended up buying a house in ibiza I had no money zero i didn't even have a job um <laughs> what did i want to do oh look, let's go on holiday end up buying somewhere <laughs> had no money, had no way of getting money. It was when the banks were crashing in 2008. Didn't worry me at all. I, I was like, it'll happen, it'll happen. If it's meant to happen, it'll happen. It was probably one of the easiest things I have ever done in my entire life because there was zero effort. It was just pure gut, follow, follow your gut, follow your gut, follow your gut. Mm. So I appreciate what you said that about when you talk about the doing the, the Michael Neal intensive. Again, I would like to do that. So <laughs> do it. I'd like do to. It. But yes. Yeah, so um, yes. Yeah, so listening to you, talking to you resonates on, on so so many levels. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Thanks for that. Yeah. You know about the 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 honesty of the post. You know. I think two years ago, I wrote a post that, uh, about the fact that I was almost bankrupt. It was a very long post. And I, I, I was like, yeah, my, I, I, I don't have any money right now. I don't have anything left. I don't have any clients. And I just posted like, yeah, whatever. You know? <laughs> and then I got some, um, some direct messages from people. And a couple of them said, uh, you know, they're so brave and uh, amazing. And everybody should be that honest. And there, was all, there were also two, two people who, who mailed me and said, this is actually the worst thing you could have ever done for your coaching career. This is like, nobody will ever hire you again. <laughs> and of course that it was true because I'm bankrupt now and I'm very unhappy. No, it's what didn't. Now the thing is, uh, uh, one and a half year later, many people say, oh yeah, you're so real and so direct and so honest and it's so cool. Um, it's actually, the simplest thing to do to be real and to be honest because you don't have to remember all the shitty stories you make up and what you pretend to be you can just whatever you know when somebody asks you something when you feel something you just respond from it in the moment and it's always true so what if you went bankrupt 
What if you say you have a shitty relationship with women or men? What if you say whatever? You get up and you think you're the, sh the worst coach in history. Now, if people don't like that, well, they don't hire me. <laughs> That's really cool because I don't want them. I don't want them to. They need other people. They don't need me. So the system is amazing. It works, it works brilliant. Isn't it brilliant that you've turned something so shitty and horrible into a po I mean, whatever was going on, you turned something so shitty and creative into a poem that someone like me actually really enjoyed and appreciated. Yeah. Is that, yeah. Is yeah. It is cool. Terrible? It's cool. And it's very, you know, once, once you're used to it, it's very easy. Now, I come from a, from a background of lying and, and bullshitting because I was an alcoholic. I was lying all the time. I was constantly breaking promises and managing my hangovers and I was lying and, uh, and you know, I spent all the money I, I ever earned that I earned quite a lot with my, my advertising agency. And now what I do right now is it's almost the opposite, but it's so much more simple and so freeing. And, you know, I can, like what you said about some posts are dark. I don't think they're dark. It's just that they're very direct and they are very colored by the emotion that I have in the moment. And mm -hmm. they're very straightforward. Um, I, I don't have, I think I don't have very much darkness left in me, to be honest. I was a very dark person, but I guess I had so much pain for such a long time. It, it felt, I, I, I have always felt that the pain has burned all my darkness away. I don't, mm. I don't know if that makes sense, but that's how it, mm. how it maybe, feels. Maybe, maybe dark wasn't the right word. Maybe more organic, more real, more relatable. Yeah. Yeah. Not, they're not fluffy and um, yeah, pretty and, words. They were why, more unorganic words. Yeah, and, and and you know why would it be special if somebody says I felt like shit today? Why is that even a thing? Yeah. Why do we have oh oh well, this guy this this person is so honest? You know when I talk about yeah I, I was an alcoholic for like twenty seven years. So what? That's what we do. We we try stuff. We try to do stuff that's helpful in the moment, and we fuck up. And sometimes you fuck up for 27 years and sometimes you fuck up all our life. What occurs to me as you're saying that is it's like, well, it's just an experience. It's just an experience of life. It's almost like the lack of fear because um, we can walk around being fearful of these experiences. And I think it's just that acceptance and allowance of whatever shows up, you know, in the moment. I don't know if that... Oh, it's yeah. never going to stay there, is it? It's no. just, uh, it's, it's passing through and you just happen to ex experience what you experience at that time. It's, mm. It was never going to stay. Yeah. <laughs> well, it always feels like it is. Yeah, it always feels that's, like it is. That's, <laughs> yeah, the always, that's the irony of it. <laughs> yeah, I always ask people, yeah. you know, you probably had millions and millions of emotions. And they say, yeah, yeah, yeah. So where are they now? Yeah, well, they're gone. I said, so why would you care if you have an another one? Yeah. No, but we just see, we don't see stuff like that. We don't see it. Like we have all these blind spots for all these very obvious things that would be immensely practical to see. Um, and I think that's uh, one of the things what I, that I like so much about coaching. You, 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 you get to point out so many obvious things to people and it's so helpful, but it's, it's already there. You can, all, you can already see it. It's just, you know, just before you. And we just... We are, you know, the brain, the mind is so cunning. It's like, yeah, 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 it's very interesting. But now help me with the real problem. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I, I just, I don't know if this, it, 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 you know, uh, um, uh, aligns with the conversation, but I just had a conversation with somebody who was very depressed. And, and, this, and, the, and the most amazing thing happened. That we, the conclusion of the, of the, of the conversation was that the person that we actually saw that how amazing a depression is mm. <laughs> like nothing is really going on, but you feel like you want to kill yourself. Mm. Now, if you can have conversations like that and he saw that he said, Oh, am I allowed to, to look at it that way? Like it's an amazingly perfect thing. I don't like it. It hurts like hell, but in what it does and what it means and what it is, it's, it's amazing. It's perfect. It's yeah. like a perfect thing going on. It, it's so real. And he said, yeah. And he was like, oh, yes. Ah, so I don't have to think about a depression like everybody does. No, you don't, if you don't want to. <laughs> now, this whole, whole rethinking of stuff changes everything. 
people, mm. you know, and I'm, and I get to be there so many times <laughs> every week. Yeah. Cool job. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Who, who would want to do a job like that? You know, <laughs> well, many people, I guess, but, or many people <laughs> think they do. They, they think they want to do it. <laughs> a lot of coaches here in Holland. <laughs> Does that answer your question, Paul? It does. Thank you. Thanks okay. both of you. Thank Thanks, you. Paul. Thanks. Um, we have another question in the chat from Laura. Laura, did you want to um, come on or do you want me to ask the question for you? Um, I'll ask the question and then you can unmute yourself if you want to um, come and share. But if not, we can just speak to it. So, um, it says, hi, Monix. Thanks for being here. Love to hear you speak. I wondered if you could talk about the difference between being an acceptance acceptance or allowance in giving up on life and not trying to create i think i have to read that is that in the chat yes okay i wonder if you could talk about the difference between being in acceptance or allowance and giving up on life Do you mean in terms of the not having an attachment to the outcome, Laura? So maybe the difference between um, kind of allowing and not having an attachment or versus like it could feel like giving up and not trying. Yes, that's what I'd say. It's, it, there, there's a space for being an allowance of what is and how is that different? Sometimes it feels the same to me as sort of giving up on life and just not being active, I guess. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. That's that's one of those things you hear a lot when 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 you when you talk with two people about, you know, allowing uh, life to to use you as whatever it wants to use you for. Uh, or just like Wu Wei, this this Chinese thing like the 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 non-doing doing something like that you know when 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 you you, you don't get involved the, the 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 personal mind doesn't get involved but stuff gets done anyway so um i don't i don't even know if allowing or accepting is a thing is a doing the 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 the, the, the thing with, with with spirituality i guess is there a lot of it is just a realization and not as much as a task or an action or or an activity you know, I, I, I like forgetting something. It's more of a process. It kind of happens, and I think the same goes for ac acceptance. Um, what I've seen is, um, over the years, I've come to know this this uh, this place within me, or without me, or where whatever it is, this this immense potential of life itself as a as a as a close friend, as something that's really very close to me. And I can kind of contact it, but not by by deliberately contacting it, but by simply by knowing that it's there. So that's the difference. And we are so used to doing, and we're so used in the Western world, we're so used to the fact that everything is a, an activity and everything is something that you have to work hard for or have to get out, uh, get off the, off the couch for. And, and of course, that also happens, you know, that's the, that's the difference between doing nothing and, and not really having something riding on the outcome and then just waiting for what will, uh, what wants to uh, be created. Mm. Now, I've, I've, I've written a couple of books and, 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 and my, my, my last Dutch book was like 223 pages and I wrote it in five days. Now that's a bit frantic, but it's just what happened. And it happened because I got out of the way, you know, because I wasn't there. I was just like totally, I don't, it's not like I'm a, like a medium or something like that. <laughs> I, maybe I am. I don't know. Never thought of it that way, but it just, it just happened. So the allowing you're talking about is actually the trust that the universe knows better and not even trying to do nothing or not trying to allow because how do you do that how do you allow you sit on the, like oh i'm sitting on the couch i'm accepting the fact that my partner left me oh i'm fine again no it's not a thing it doesn't happen it's more that you see that maybe that it's no use to fight with it 
maybe that's accepted. Um, it feels to me like we almost are more moving from wisdom rather than thinking, if that makes sense. It's allowing I could have said that. It would, would have been a way shorter answer. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah I don't so I don't know if that helps Laura um but it does thank you very much no that's perfect um and I think Jackie did you raise your hand do you still have a question I'm just unmute you, there you go. Jackie do you still have a question yeah hi hey, hey Jackie Hi, I so appreciate your joy and your enthusiasm and enjoy hearing you. Um, my question is with COVID, um, I've gone through the principles and I'm, and I'm in Amy Johnson's little school of big change. And so I know it comes from inside out, but with COVID and all of their restrictions, um, my husband went to the hospital a couple of weeks ago. I had to call nine nine one one for it. It wasn't COVID related. It, he was in really bad stomach pain, and of course the hospital wouldn't let me in, so I had to stay home and you know pray that everything was fine. And then I've got some procedures coming up that my husband's not going to be allowed to go with me. One of them's to my cardiologist. And he's on the third floor, and I've explained to him, I says, me getting in an elevator and going up to the third floor by myself, I'll have a heart attack. <laughs> and just the fear of, you know, and I, I'm disabled, I walk with a cane, and I get dizzy real easy, and I've explained that to him. I don't understand why a spouse cannot go. And that just frustrates the hell out of me. <laughs> yeah. I that I can understand that, of course. Yeah. Well, they probably have a good reason for that. I don't know. And maybe the reasons in the United States are different than the reasons. Yeah, they have here. we're 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 in phase one, and we're on lockdown and everything. So. Yeah, but what I what I do know with the COVID thing, the COVID COVID virus is not an emotional virus. You know, the COVID virus doesn't cause panic or pain uh, emotional pain or distress it doesn't thinking about it does you know thinking yes. about the future does so i have never whenever this whole covid thing started i haven't worried i mean that not worried a second not a second and the same by the way the same goes for elevators <laughs> now, elevators yeah. are not scary <laughs> elevators are just boxes that bring you from one floor to the other you know yeah they're not I, scary i get that <laughs> <laughs> but you can think a lot about elevators and you can, can think about the fact that you might get stuck and then you'll be there for 18 hours with people farting constantly so yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, or you know, coughing <laughs> oh yeah yeah i don't know it just seems that um i don't know i'm like I, i'm a person who likes to be in in control and when when this well anything can take a person out of control but covid right now has taken control away from a lot of people um and well, there's yeah the thing yeah is, I don't, what, what, tell, tell me about tell me what, what do you have under control nothing i mean i well, have no control yeah. over anything <laughs> but you like to have control yeah. i would <laughs> Have you ever tried not not wanting to have control, just and be and be be okay with that, even just for an hour, because that's the way it is anyway. Yeah, yeah. It doesn't feel good, but I've. I've well, you have to get to used to it. But but you know the whole control idea is just an illusion anyway. So, like people said, oh, well, the, well nothing is is sure anymore in the world. Well, you know that's the whole deal about the world and life. Nothing is ever sure. Now, the thing that it, it, it looked sure is simply because we all have these ideas about how our life is. We have friends, we have a job, we have a car, we have a future, we have a pension. And it's like a, a matrix we roll out over the futures in our mind. And then we feel secure by that thought. Now, COVID came, and now all of a sudden, people says everything is up for grabs. Well, that's not news. It has always been that way. 
but just in our minds, some all, all of it can sound like it's very secure and we know what's going to happen. We don't. We don't. And that makes life so beautiful. Now, it's okay if you want to pretend you do. Life doesn't care. You know, if you want to pretend you, you control everything, but it's simply not true. You know, the biggest decision in my life, the biggest thing that happened in my life was the fact that I, that I was born. I, I, was, I had no control over that, to be honest. So without that, true. I wouldn't even be here. True. I just, yeah. Yeah, I just like the fact of being lived. And it's so totally fine if while you're being lived, you have the idea that you have control, that it's you who picks tea instead of coffee, that it's you who, who, who buys this car and not that car. But when you really examine it, you always find that it's just an impulse we have and we listen to it and we follow it up. Yeah. So I know really my matter. husband and and I dis disagree a lot on the seriousness of the COVID. I'm I'm taking it more serious than he is. He just thinks it's a hoax and a political thing and whatever. And and I'm saying no, no, no. It's real. It's real. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's hard, you know, to know exactly because. Because who should you trust? Who knows what's going on? Who knows what's happening? Who knows the future? Well, nobody knows. You know, you have so many experts who say things that contradict what the other experts say. So it's very exactly. confusing. And what I did, I just, I just stopped reading the news eight years ago. And that yeah. made my life way simpler than it was before. And the thing is, I was always worried, but it didn't change anything. So I was worried constantly, which gave me like like the first idea of, of having control, because then I would be able to come up with solutions. But I never got that far because I was exhausted by the worrying. Yes. Now, worrying doesn't, doesn't change anything. That's worrying just say. blocks our capacity to come up with fresh stuff. Yeah, that's and so We're so used to worrying. Who, who wants yeah. to be in control, really? Because as soon as we think we're in control, we're limiting ourselves to what we think. And if we, if we allow that to kind of just be unknown, then there's so much possibility because anything can happen. Yeah. I think the air traffic controller wants to be in control. <laughs> True. <laughs> but then and again, I, he's, he's also depending on all the pilots and all the, you know, all the, all the airplanes and, and the weather. And, and so, yeah. yeah. But, it's, but it's, it, it's, it's an illusion. It's an illusion. The thing is we can play with it exactly the way we want to. So if you want to feel like you're in control, it's totally fine. It's not true, but you, <laughs> if you want to believe it, well, do it, you know? Yeah. Perfect. But it's so yeah. freeing to realize that it, you don't have to, and that life will go on anyway. You still go to the toilet. You still either go in the elevator or you take the stairs. Everything just <laughs> goes on the way it goes on. Yeah, and things are going to turn out the way, and I like that phrase that I've heard so many times, worrying about tomorrow takes takes the joy away from now. There you go. Yeah. And it does. <laughs> it does. And, and and it just doesn't result in very, very many helpful things. It's no. like it's like many people are constantly walking around with umbrellas under their arm just for the moment when it will <laughs> rain someday. Well, you know, if it rains someday, just go and stand under a tree or get mm -hmm. wet. But, you know, and, but yeah, you see the people with all the umbrellas, they say when it rains, you see, you see how great it was that I've been carrying these <laughs> umbrellas for a year. <laughs> <laughs> I like to dance in the rain. <laughs> you should. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, that's cool. <laughs> so, well, thank you guys. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you for your question. Yeah. Thanks, Jackie. Great. Thanks, Jackie. Right, so what time is it? How are we doing? Um, has anybody got any last questions before we finish? Because that feels like a good place to uh, to end. But um, yeah, if anybody's got any last questions, then speak now or... <laughs> oh, yeah, Michelle says, um, I just realized there's no perfection. Yeah. Well, I think everything is perfection. Like, you know, I want a very good example of, of, of perfection is Donald Trump. <laughs> and I, 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 I mean that Donald Trump is right now is the perfect Donald Trump. You know, everything he does is exactly as Donald Trump should do. 
like like the the asshole he is, like the the hatred he he spreads, like the like the the the, the women women hater he is, like the, the the racist he is, perfectly Trump. Now you can oppose that and you can disagree. That's something else. But as a Trump, he's perfect. And the same goes for COVID. It's the perfect COVID. Everything about it is perfect. Still, you can disagree. You want to you want to wipe it out? Maybe I would like to do that. But as what it is, it's perfect, and that goes for everything. Mm. Yeah, that's that's uh, so true. Yeah, ordinarily perfect. <laughs> hey, Karina. Hi. <laughs> Did you have a question, Karina, or are you just waving? <laughs> You're just waving. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Hey, Dominique, good to see you. I do have a, a question. I just wanted, um, because the blog, there's so many, you know, blog posts that just overflow. How, how does it work? Do you sit down and, and it just comes? Do you, do you make a point of it or just whenever something in the shower? You no, can... I've, uh, yeah, I have, I have two, two ways of doing this, uh, or two ways of, 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 of how they they uh, come about. Mm. The one is that I I think I just want to write something, and then I sit down and I write something. <laughs> like, or I am looking around in the world and I see something happening and I think, oh, that's interesting. Let's write something about that. So in the first, it's just like I I love writing. I love sitting down and I love mm. and I love the moment when something, and then I just type something. It's like. Today I don't have nothing to write about. And then the second sentence is, but the thing is, sometimes I do and sometimes I don't, and I don't really care. And then the third th sentence is, and you see, I already have a third sentence. So the, the first didn't make any sense. <laughs> now we never know, do we? And then I have a fourth one. You know, <laughs> you, know you can also use the things that uh, seem to be going against what you want to do to get where you want to go. So when I don't want to know, know anything to write about, I write about that. But it's, it's just, I like writing. I just like being in the energy of it. And sometimes I, I write three blog posts in half an hour and, and then I, and I don't write for, for two weeks because I don't, I don't want to, I don't want to adhere to a, to a, to an algorithm. I don't want to get, mm. get caught up by, by Facebook or Instagram simply because that's, that's what they want. I, that's a little bit childish and, or rebellious depending on how you see it, but so I, do, I want to do it my way. Um, and I don't, I don't want to get into a rhythm where, where people expect something of me or when I expect something of myself. I also want to write shitty posts. I want to write crappy posts as well because I don't really care about having a very high standard. It's just not that very interesting to me. Mm -hmm. so I just write. That's it. That's gorgeous. Yeah, no, Thanks. that was a very yeah. good that was a good question, Karina. And it's really funny because as you as you're talking about writing poetry, when I was going through my divorce and I went traveling to Bali, I'd never written poetry in my life. And all of a sudden I just found myself writing poetry and it was the same. It was just like it just kind of came through me, just flowed through me. And and again, it's like, yeah, it was just a way of, I guess, stuff being expressed. And I didn't have a lot of attachment to it. So it was just fun. <laughs> so I so, so how do you do it now? Are you are you preparing are you no. collecting topics or are no. you i'm just having fun and playing <laughs> which mm. is kind of the purpose of this conversation right <laughs> yeah seems to be the thing to do right yeah exactly yeah everything com comes from that yeah that's really very cool yeah. by the way I, when everybody talking about my poetry i never know what they mean because <laughs> i don't for, well i don't i don't think i write poetry but it's, a, the, it's just little stories but you I know that's poetry. different definition <laughs> I see it as poetry as well. When I'm reading it, I'm like, oh, this is a good one. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, Marnix. I loved that. That was um, really one of, yeah, it was a really fun conversation. So um, thank you very much for, for being here. If um, people want to hear from you, because obviously there's people at home as well, I usually include people, people's links. So I don't know if you want to share the links to where people can find you. Um, yeah. Read your yeah. Poems. <laughs> Hey, Michelle, Michelle thinks I'm a medium. <laughs> well, I'm fine. <laughs> I'm fine thinking I'm a medium. Feels good. Yeah, I, you, you, can, you can find me on, uh, on Facebook, uh, Marnix Powell's Coach. And you can, my website is marnix.coach or marnix.nl because I live in Holland. Yeah. Um, I have a, an Instagram page. I'm on LinkedIn. I, so I'm on Facebook. I, I'm fairly active on Twitter. Um, 
but uh, yeah, so my, my, my website, my business website, my, where you can find about, find about my coaching stuff, my books, and a lot of blogs. I have a lot of blogs on my website, marnix.nl or marnix.coach. And I do this thing where people, and it's, it's possible again, where people come visit, uh, and go, come to Amsterdam and stay with me for a couple of days. Not in my, in my apartment, it's way too small, but I, I do these intensives where uh, I work with people in Amsterdam. It's called Meet Me in Amsterdam, makes figures. And uh, I love doing those and they, and they are possible again. So if you would like to do something like that, come to Amsterdam, stay in a hotel for two or three days and work with me. Uh, and I'm kind of, you know what I'm, the tagline of my meet me in Amsterdam is uh, bring your shit and leave it here. <laughs> I love that. Can we all come? That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah, you can. <laughs> I would love that. Plane, yeah. Or we can go to Paul and Ibiza. <laughs> that sounds really cool yeah, as well. That's true. <laughs> yeah. Lovely. Well, if you pop me those links over, I'll po I'll post those up with the replay. Sure. Well. Yeah. Um, I don't know if you need to leave, but I'm just going to do some announcements about the next couple of speakers. Um, but thank thanks. You so thanks much. for inviting me, and 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 uh, you know, people uh, listening and watching. Thanks for uh, for being here. It's always fun to have a few faces in the in the corner of the screen. So I really appreciate you uh, taking the time to be here. Thanks. Thanks, Nico. Really awesome. Uh, what you're doing. Oh, thank you. No, it's, um, and yeah, actually the summit has even just been born of having fun. So <laughs> this is why we're here. This is living proof of <laughs> what we've been talking about. So um, yeah. thank you so much. It's been a lot of fun. Um, yeah, thank you. So next Friday, the 10th of July, um, I'm going to be chatting with the wonderful leadership coach, Elizabeth Lovius. Um, who is here to share with us all about how we can let wisdom lead. Uh, so I'm really excited for that conversation. I know uh, Elizabeth is also all about kind of embracing our humanness um, as well as seeing our deeper wisdom. So this is going to be uh, a really fun unraveling as well. And then after that, we have the fabulous Leanne Brooke Tyler, who's here to share on living a soul led life. And I love Leanne as well. So Super exciting conversations coming up. And then we also have Billy Mann as well um, the week after who's sharing all about how life is a gift to be celebrated. So yeah, a few exciting conversations coming up. <laughs> so I'm um, looking forward to those. Um, yeah, just an update on my self-rediscovery school. The next round of the self-rediscovery foundations program actually started today. Um, so that was really beautiful. We had the opening circle. Um, yeah, I love doing that. Again, another fun creation that just came from, from nowhere. <laughs> so um, that's been a lot of fun. This is the second round. Um, and then I'm having a baby. So um, that's going to be, yeah, interrupting the next round a little bit. You had, so. you had fun creating that, I guess. <laughs> I know, yeah. <laughs> Um, so, so the the one after that is going to be October, um, along with the Unravel program, which is an eight week program, um, which is all about kind of unraveling a life we live by dancing in who we want to be and playing with life. So that's again kind of very much linked to this conversation. So those two are um, going to be opening up in October. Um, so I'll be opening up registration for those soon. If you want to have a little look and um, register interest, if it's something that you're wanting to receive more information on nearer the time. Um, and then I'm also working on something very exciting for January as well. So I'm going to leave that one as a bit of a teaser because <laughs> that's just something I'm playing with and having fun with. Um, so, yeah, if, um, if you want to have any, if you've got any questions, just reach out. Um, I'm always um, in the Self Rediscovery Facebook community. Um, and also, you know, like Marnix offer one to ones as well, if people like to explore a little bit deeper one to one. Um, but other than that, I will pop all the links that Marnix provided in the uh, member vault area with the replay. And uh, yeah, I'll catch you next week. Thank you again, Marnix. It was a lot of fun. Thanks. And uh, Bye. Thanks, everybody. Up as well. <laughs> Lots of love.